So type of occurrence of mineral matter is oh, it can be quite um, can be quite uh, various. So it, mineral matter can be in thin vents, can be part of the pubic uh, cavities of cracks, and quite often, like as you've seen from the photomicrographs where I showed you fusinite, uh, fusinite quite often is um, contaminated with with some uh, amino matter which kills the cavity of, of uh, fusinite. So sometimes you can see, like if you were to separate fusinite, for example, that in many cases it might have a higher um, ash content. And amino matter affects the cold processing and handling. So, for example, the hard minerals uh, will increase the wear and tear of equipment during the handling and, and crushing. So there are many um, sort of, uh, things which would uh, affect the processing. And uh, in terms of uh, coal, which is uh, destined for uh, coke making, the quality of, of steel is uh, quite affected by some of the elements in ash, like, for example, phosphorus is very um, uh, deleterious um, in terms of uh, bad quality. It comes to the uh, coal, which is uh, destined for um, coke productions. And of course, the sulfur, um, pyrite, and other forms of sulfur can be also uh, organic sulfur, uh, very um, disadvantages in it comes to the thermal coal. So the, definitely the coal preparation aims at removing most of the mineral matter, or at least to the um, uh, to the level that is accept acceptable by the specifications of particular coal. So this is um, just the uh, diagram to show you how would the different type of mineral matter affect the processing of, of coal, for example. So as you can see, when we talk about syngenetic minerals, so this is the fine dissemination of, of the mineral mineral matter within the coal matrix here, so vitrinite, inertinite, and we have a sort of fine disseminated, uh, quite often quartz can be uh, fine disseminated, pyrite um, can have also quite a fine dissemination within the coal. So this is what happens when you try to process by gravity, for example. Definitely that type of material would always would be difficult to um, to to clean because it would be difficult to separate that mineral if it's in genetic form as such. And it would always end up with a lot of middling material. And uh, you won't be able to reduce the, your ash content to um, substantially if you have a, this type of, of um, mineral matter content within your coal. And in terms of epigenetics, so when the minerals are sort of um, into sort of cracks Definitely, this one will be the one which is the easiest to remove because once you crush the coal um, to certain sizes, these minerals will be released. So definitely, that would help in removing the mineral matter from such type of, of, of minerals. And uh, and here is the one which also, like if you have a larger um, a grains of of pyrite that or pyrite or, or other uh, mineral matter, so definitely would uh, be uh, contributed to middling. However. Um, if you crush the coal to certain size, you'll be able to um, more efficiently remove it from, from your coal. In terms of uh, coal petrography applications, so it, it can be applied in many areas, and uh, the prospecting of coal, so another way, looking at the microscopic, microscopic uh, composition, it can actually um, serve also as a... Uh, um, as an indicator of certain uh, continuity of seam and, and is applied to prospecting and coal, heat oil, natural gas, and oil shell. Petrol maturation can be much with any, um, with a particular rank stage of coal. So it's many application in sort of uh, geological studies and uh, seam correlations. And one important application of coal petrography is uh, to measure the reflectance of vitronite. So right now, the vitronite reflectance is something that you measure at the um, microscopic level. So that's, this is the system where it becomes quite sophisticated. Because here, uh, if you remember, the vitronite is the material which has gone through the qualification level. So in other words, this is something which almost is a fingerprint of the coal. So if you are able to uh, measure the 
written in that can be able to quite accurately um, define the rank of call. And it's actually for opacity it serves as a quite uh, valuable parameter. And many of the applications also were associated with the termination of rank quite reliably. And, and secondly, also in maturation of, of other organic uh, materials, the, uh, the reflectance uh, measurement is, is quite important in that area here. So the curl uh, petrography um, has been applied um, to mining, not, uh, as I said, since correlation. Preparation to some extent, as you will find later on as we go through the course, um, that really we're not at the level as, for example, with the process knowledge that you really are liberating the material which you have a very low low uh, concentration of. So you really have to pay attention. You have to uh, look at the crushing and grinding liberation sizes. In, in coal preparation, really aiming at sort of sorting the material into certain grade type of material. So coal petrography is not as, as widely used, I would say, as, as process mineralogy, for example. But it is very helpful in a situation where, for example, you're not able to determine why you cannot clean your coal to certain, for example, uh, uh, ash uh, level. So it's not widely used, but it can also be used uh, quite uh, efficiently, I would say, if it needs to be in terms to uh, to looking at the problematic behavior of particular um, coal material. So uh, the use of coal petrography in carbonization coking is is has been quite successful because um, what really um, matters in in the carbonization is the composition of petrographic composition and and it uh, it is very important. So in that area, the coal petrography had a quite a big contribution. Liquefaction and combustion, where the composition in terms of uh, content of different materials, it's important to, uh, to, for example, predict reactivity of coal in liquefaction and in combustion. Um, uh, combustion characteristics can be sort of more or less um, uh, uh, predicted from from the from the petrography. So. Um, Definitely the degree of integral between coal and minerals liberation is an important step, but as I say, it's not commonly used unless you come you have the problems then then you use petrography to um, to solve these problems. And here's just to show you the application and also how the uh dictionary reflectors changes versus the rank and uh, and also how we can use this parameter as a very um, reliable um, parameter to determine the rank, for example. So here, um, this is the biochemical stage. So this is diagenesis when we have the peat uh, uh, formation and we have the composition of that different plant material. The second stage is the um, metamorphosis. So this is the uh, heat and pressure. So that's the qualification when we start um, uh, we, we, when we start with the lower end calls and then end up with higher end calls. So as you can see, by looking at the vitronite, uh, measuring the vitronite refractance, you can see that there is a very good correlation and it's very actually, um, um, it, 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 it actually, it, it does reflect the um, true uh, qualification stages and as opposed to other um, uh, macerals, you can see the exonite, so this is the lipsonite, so this is this kind of spore um, and the cutonite type of material. Then at, at the, uh, you can see the qualification tracks are quite different for these different uh, um, um, materials as, as you uh, determine the uh, reflectance um, on them. So as you can see, the vitronite would be the materials that follows the qualification tracks very reliably and it becomes a uh, very um, accurate indicator of coal and and as a matter of fact, in many cases it can be a lot better um, representing the um, organic material than volatile matter and for example fixed carbon which is calculated from proximate analysis. Um, nevertheless, when you compare the uh, volatile matter 
volatile matter of vitronite, again, it, it has to be stressed that that vitronite is this material which which is the sort of uh, uh, the indicator of the maturation. So the volatile matter of vitronite determined on vitronite, so selected um, uh, type of, of, of uh, material from the coal versus the reflectance, it has a quite good correlation. So in other words, the reflectance can be correlated very closely with volatile matter, which is obtained from the vitronite uh, concentrate of your coal. 